they figure that out? Right. It makes me feel better about using it, actually, now that they've likened it that way. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I don't hear any feedback. Kitty. Yeah, I don't have... I can't hear anything from you, Anna. Okay. I mean, honestly, yeah, walking around the Blowhorn is how some people find out about things, so... It's so true. Like, they don't... I, like, I started using the at everyone yesterday, and I'm like, not sorry that, like, over 100 people are going to get this notification. Not at all. I know, I ask you each time, it's like, are you sure you want to do this? And I'm like, I think yeah, so. You're so. I love her. The goodest kiddo. Yeah. We are live now. All right. Thanks, Len. Um, so, hi. Welcome back. Uh, we are doing event planning and organization now, which is really just going to be a kind of like open discussion on event planning and questions people might have on event planning. I'm Squire Antoinette. I am a Master Central and Squire to Dragoon Dop of the Highlands of Chaos, and I have run Thunderguard's event, I've run Armageddon, I've run Chaos Wars, uh, I've run day events, so I have pretty well-rounded experience in event running. We have some other really awesome people who have event experience in here, um, and in the Zoom group chat, there should be two document links. One is to a troll document like a how to run troll which kind of turns into a how to run events document and a dmv weapons check uh dmv style weapons check guide um both of those uh i wrote for my central things um for my apprenticeship um and they're there shared for everyone on my google drive if you want to take a look at them um and those are kind of the documents that I'm going to be looking at while we're talking. So I guess the first thing is, what questions do people have about event planning? Um, if you guys could like type those in the chat or very carefully unmute yourself and ask. So there's not like a billion people talking at once. Does anyone have any event planning questions? None? I did, but I forgot them as soon as we started the meeting. Okay, well, we'll, we'll talk about the one that Leda just posted. Um, how do you monitor or schedule your time use? I am personally very bad at that. Um, I have people who do that for me so that I don't forget to eat. Um, because I will. Um, so personally, I, I have uh, I have a Zeldrin um, who is one of uh, my brothers in the EDF and he will make sure that at lunchtime, he finds me to make sure that I have in fact eaten breakfast and am now going to eat lunch. Um, and one of my unit mates in the Juggernauts who makes sure we all eat essentially uh, is our camp cook. Um, and he makes sure I eat dinner or someone brings me dinner. Um, that happens a lot, um, especially with like weapons check in the morning. People make sure you bring breakfast to your unit mates who are running weapons check so they don't forget to eat because they, they will. Um, so like monitoring, scheduling your time is, is really hard, but it helps to have like more than one person doing one thing. So like when you have one person in charge of one area and only one person, they end up not having any time to do anything else. So at Chaos Wars, we try to make sure that we have two people like co-heading. So like um, on the event staff for Chaos Wars, had we had it like in the real life or like in person this year, uh, there's Dop and I, and then Sin and Hobbit were the event coordinators. So Dop, uh, sort of handles the financial side of the event. And then I kind of oversee, the, the idea was that I would kind of oversee everything and deal with things like the porta potties and the dumpsters and like the contract with the site and those sorts of things. And then Sin and Hobbit would be in charge of running the event. 
and sort of split those duties where they saw fit with their own strengths and how that was gonna like work. And then we have generally two people in charge of each area with the exception of troll where Mooring is confident and fine to do troll on her own um, or run troll on her own. Um, so like we had two people in charge of the field instead of just one person who then gets stuck heralding all week and doesn't get to have any fun. Um, then you have two people and you can sort of split that up. So like person A is heralding in the morning, person B is heralding in the afternoon so that person B can fight in the morning and person A can fight in the afternoon. So you sort of like having two people in charge of each area of an event, having more than one like main event coordinator makes it so you have time to do things on your own and you have time where you're in charge of things. So like that's sort of how I've worked to like monitor and schedule your use of time, um, like personal use of time. And like, there's a different way to schedule like what's going on during an event, depending on how long that event is. So like the Oktoberfest schedule is crazy because Oktoberfest is Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I swear we fit just as much things in at Aukfest in three days as we do in Chaos Wars in a week. Um, I think Bifter has the same thing. It's shorter than Chaos, but it fits just as much stuff in. So I think it's just a matter of how times like arranged and like where at Chaos, we have the luxury of things not necessarily having to overlap because we got more days, wherein in the case of like schedules for Aukfest and, and Bifter, certain things are going to overlap, so people are going to have to make choices, um, where if you have more days, therefore more hours, you don't necessarily have to have things overlap and make those choices. Um, so it really depends on the length of your event, all the things you need to do during your event, and how many people you have in your event staff. Um, depends on like the scheduling, the monitoring, and like use of, of event time. Um, I, I am going to pause for a second to mute myself because my sibling is here and has a question. I will be right back. Sorry about that guys. We had a cat related issue. Um, so yeah, that's sort of how I've worked out uh, monitoring and scheduling my time. I'm personally really bad at it. So like my personal time, uh, if you're not great at monitoring your own personal time, maybe have someone who's better at it than you, like be your event time buddy and they make sure you don't like die because you forgot to eat. Um, all right, our next question is, how do you ensure everyone is aware of what's happening? At Chaos Wars, we have a bullhorn and a sound system and we use them liberally. Um, Aukfest is similar. We have a sound system with a microphone or they have a sound system with a microphone uh, and we usually put Dmox on the end of it because that's just what we do. Um, <laughs> and so like those sorts of things, Aukfest uh, has schedules posted in other places uh, Chaos Wars, we have schedules posted at Troll and all of the bathrooms, usually at Gelf Camp. Uh, and our goal was to have bulletin boards in other places around camp, around the campsite, so people could look at the schedule. But that didn't happen last year because we didn't have enough bulletin boards. Um, but so, like, making sure people are aware of what's happening and when it's happening is not necessarily a thing that someone has to be responsible for because we are all adults and people should know what they want to do when that something is to do but it's also a Belgarth event and people kind of expect announcements to be made so it's it's kind of a delicate balance like we don't give out pamphlets at chaos wars anymore because they end up on the ground two feet from troll um we have copies of the schedule if people want them to put up in their camps um but we've ceased making like handouts that we give out at Troll because they just end up on the ground and that's a waste of paper and we don't need to kill any more trees than necessary. Um, I don't know what you do at Bifter for schedules and like 
letting people know, Anna? What what do you guys do? I've never actually been to Bifter. Um, so we, we do have the schedule online in the same way you guys are doing it digitally now as a Google document that's available. And like, I mean, it's, you know, we'll fill it out and then it's live from months and months before, before the event. We also try to do the dry erase boards. Um, we have a tent that's next to the main fighting field for like new fighters and information that's staffed where people can borrow weapons or garb or um, like things like Highlander tournament or Assassin's tournament would come out of that tent um, to take pressure off of troll. And so that has a lot of uh, information boards that's next to main fighting field. We also have a tournament field. So we have another set of uh, boards there. And then we have a game room, which is where most classes are held. It's an indoor building and we have another set of boards there. And then we try to, um, although we don't always get it done because of rain, but we try to take uh, paper schedules, put them in plastic sleeves and then zip tie them to porta potties. Okay, so so fairly similar in what we do at Chaos. We just tack them to the wooden outcroppings on most of the bathrooms. Um, um, yeah, and since as in Gelf Camp, we have our camp kitchen. Uh, people have a little whiteboard with everything on the meal plan. And if they're volunteering for shifts to help to make sure everybody eats, that's a good way to make sure like people don't forget to eat. Gelf Camp's also really good at making sure that their volunteers who are at Weapons Check in the morning still get breakfast. So a runner, usually Turbo or Droplet or another teenage, younger than teenage being, uh, gets sent to Weapons Check with food and or troll, um, depending on who's volunteering for what. Um, and that similar happens uh vlad sends my breakfast to weapons check or troll with somebody um so like that's also an in-camp thing i know brotherhood uh in the midwest at least i don't know what they do in uh out west but they have a whiteboard in their camp that like has they put the daily schedule on it so like this is happening at these times and like important things to know, like if unit battles are happening that day, so everyone knows when they are. Um, and that sort of organization is like a camp organization that's for the responsibility of each person and how you set up your camp can help the people in your camp manage their time better, but that's completely like camp specific. Um, all right, next question. How do you re recruit volunteers and how do we keep our volunteers from being overworked and underappreciated? If I had the answer to that question, I'd be a dang millionaire. Um, a lot of people recruit volunteers. Chaos Wars uses uh, sign up Genesis, uh, or at least we did. I don't know if we're going to keep doing it. It's an awful lot of work to get it set up and not everyone gets the notifications they're supposed to get. I might go to moving, we might try like a Google calendar next year, we're not sure. But generally you put out a call for volunteers at Chaos Wars, there's points for volunteering that or boulevards like last year was what we used um, that go towards the Chaos Banner and winning the Chaos Banner for your group. Um, and so things to like keep volunteers is to offer them something in exchange. Um, People who volunteered ahead things for Chaos Wars. So last year, Sin was in charge of daylight, or daylife and part of nightlife. Um, and all of our heads of areas for Chaos got free event t-shirts um, that said staff on the back, um, which were slightly different than everyone else's t-shirt. Um, yeah, just I will finish what we do for Chaos uh, and Ockfest, and then you can chime in for volunteers because you have a good thing to say about how we keep them from being underappreciated. Um, and then for Ockfest, uh, lots of times it's like you volunteer for so many hours of a shift or so many hours uh, at the event, and your name's put into a draw, and you can win prizes. It's usually given that Numenor also two nights of Numenor own forged foam, often forged foam gift certificates. Sometimes it's like uh, other garb from other places, presents they've, or like uh, gifts they've, or like donations they've gotten. Um, and sometimes like it depends on who's running the event, but like sometimes if you volunteer a certain amount, you can get a certain amount off your event fee. Um, and yeah, so Sin just said, incentivizing uh, is one of the easiest ways that can come in any shape or form. Um, swag points, some type of special treatment. 
Um, we do a uh, best volunteer. So each area uh, over the course of the week gets, uh, tells me or uh, decides who like their top volunteer was for the field, for troll, all of those things. And they get um, some sort of like prize, whether it's uh, free entry to Chaos Wars next year or um, a gift certificate to such and such vendor, um, all those sorts of things. Um, and so each area sort of has that best volunteer thing. Um, and then sometimes it's just a matter of like thanking people, like going and making sure you remember that this is everyone's vacation um, and everyone is giving up time of like their free time to make this work um, and reminding people that like, don't treat the volunteers like trash because it's their vacation too. Um, and just making sure that they have like, they feel like they're appreciated. So like for this whole online chaos thing, like Sin and Leita did a whole awful lot to make sure that we had online chaos wars, that classes were happening. Anna donated her Zoom account. Um, Len and his friend Alex, Alex is not even a Bellagrim, um, are making sure that stuff is being streamed on Twitch, which we set up like yesterday. People are putting in a lot of time um, and it's not even vacation time. Like none of us are on vacation right now. We're all still doing like daily life stuff. Um, I have homework to do after this class is done. Like, um, so it's just a matter of making sure to remember to thank the people who are doing the work because without them, you'd be doing it all by yourself. We did have that problem at Chaos Wars last year. We had a significantly lower volunteer turnout than we normally do. We also had a significantly decreased event population than normal. So that also affects volunteers. If you have less people at the event, and still the same amount of volunteer work to do because the volunteer work doesn't really change depending on how many people show up, um, except for like feast, you end up still having the same amount of work, but not the same amount of people. Um, so that has an effect on it as well. Anna, you had something you wanted to put in there? Uh, yeah, so I really wanted to, to like second some of the things that you said about um, having your volunteers back and letting them know that you're not going to tolerate people being abusive towards them. So our, our sport has a long history of being very abusive towards volunteers and uh, event coordinators are also volunteers. Um, so I always ask for my volunteers, I ask them to remember to always be professional and kind, but that doesn't mean giving people what they want. It just means being professional and kind. And that if they are getting abused by attendees, then they need to know that, you know, we don't tolerate that and that those people are, are going to be threatened with an exit. Um, and so that way they, they feel like it's okay for me to stay kind. It's okay for me to stay professional. I don't have to yell. I don't have to shout because I know that the event's going to have my back and get rid of these people if they don't settle down. And the other thing that that helps do is it prevents a cycle of sort of abuses where people are abusive to staff and event coordinators and volunteers and then event coordinators and staff are abusive back to the event and it can kind of make it yucky. So what you want to do is kind of always have that positive, those positive loops. Um, on that note for helping everyone feel happy and appreciated, um, we'll do as many, like a lot of job positions have special perks. So for example, serving feast at Bifter, um, we get um, very fancy desserts. And so only the people who serve feast um, are getting those fancy desserts. Um, the, the, the desserts we serve are very good, but the fancy desserts are really, really good. And so everybody who does that gets fancy desserts. Um, we also kind of have a small fund for a department budget. So, for example, I know that Troll last year, they, they you know, and it's, it's a very small budget. It could be like $20, $30. They wanted um, black light pens and black light flashlights so they could draw, uh, you know, glow in the dark, you know, inappropriate things on people. And that would, would, they would only show up under black light. <laughs> um, and so I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. And then I'll, I'll buy that stuff for them. Um, and then we do a lot of staff dinners and meals and staff snacks. So... If you came to the building and you had been working hard and you needed water or you needed a snack or food, um, there's probably a meal for you at least once a day, maybe twice a day, depending on the day. Setup day has all meals are covered setup day and all meals are covered exit day. Uh, otherwise, there's at least one meal a day for staff 
um, to make sure that they are eating and including like granola bars and things like that. Because to be honest, if you guys have done this before, you know, you sometimes you barely get to go to the bathroom in time and like, it's brutal. Um, and so, you know, literally physically supporting people. Um, we also have like a, a tent nearby that's pretty comfy that we're trying to like fancy up. That's make it like a staff chill tent. It's, I call it the harem tent. It, after, you've probably seen it. It's open to the public too. Um, but uh, we're trying to fancy that up and make it a nice staff rest area. Um, um, yeah, Chaos Wars had a volunteer tent. Um, it didn't go so well last year because we, we lacked a Betty who makes those things work really well. But uh, the last couple of years where Betty has been in charge of food services, she set up like full on, like she had fruit on ice and like full on breakfast, like sandwiches and wraps in the morning, coffee, tea, hot chocolate, juice, water. And she changed it out during the day. So like at lunchtime, there'd be sandwiches. And it was only for like event staff or volunteers. So they could go there and like grab a water bottle or a juice box or some fruit or what have you. Um, and that that was really helpful. Um, yeah, God bless Betty. Um, she, Hopefully she'll be on our event staff next year for Chaos War. She was supposed to be on this year, but here we are online. We don't really need feast online. Um, <laughs> but so that those are really good ways to like keep your volunteers happy and coming back. Um, the West has a much better volunteer culture than mid in terms of things. In the Midwest, you see a lot of volunteer burnout because they are less likely to like be treated as people and simply like I get a lot of black running troll at Awkfest because people dislike Numenor don't know why but that's what it is and so like oh no the big evil Numenor um they're not big or evil they're just Numenor um and Awkfest is like the biggest or second biggest event in the country like not last year, but the year before, we got over a thousand people. You try coordinating troll for a thousand waivers. Like, it's a lot of work. So if I don't have a pen automatically, don't get snappy with me. Like, it's certain things like that where behaviors need to change in the whole community. And the only way we can do that is by promoting and, like, making sure that we don't tolerate poor behavior towards our volunteers as event coordinators, which leads into uh, the next question uh, Ayn posted on you. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your fighting name. I feel so bad. Um, but uh, what are the EC's primary responsibilities? So depending on the event you're running, uh, it's different. So like for Chaos Wars, we have DOP, um, who is in charge of funds and like insurance and handling that whole like legally side of the event and then we have me and i'm in charge of overseeing most of the event in terms of like the site contract finding an event site if we need a new one um porta potties dumpsters ice if we can get it on site um things like what areas need what things and then we had this year we have sin and hobbit um, who were the event coordinators. So they were in charge of the day-to-day -day, like happenings. So like Sin and Hobbit were in charge of finding event staff to fill positions like who was running the field, who was running classes, who was running Bardic, who was running nightlife. Those sorts of things were their responsibility. And like the whole over like theme of Chaos Wars, um, like the t-shirt, uh, I like the t-shirt colors, the t-shirt art, um, promoting the event sort of fell there with them. Um, and so like, it, it really depends on the event you're running. Um, and so for realms, often if you're running an event for your realm, the responsibilities are a little bit different than if you're running like a major Bellagarth event that has 50, 60 different realms showing up to it from across the entire country and other countries. Um, versus like a day events responsibilities are going to be less than like a weekend event responsibilities so how you break down those primary responsibilities often are event dependent but generally the of ec's primary responsibilities are funding 
facilities, event site, and making sure everything happens with their team. Don't try to only be one event coordinator for an entire event and do everything because I can tell you it's not gonna work. It is just not going to work. Always have a team with you, whether that's a team of event coordinators or like just like area heads that are part of your team, always have a team. And check in with your team, like, um, so that like set deadlines. So like if we had been having chaos in person, there would have been different deadlines than we had for online chaos for like things. So like the budget for chaos for different areas, I would have needed that far earlier in the year from them than I would need it for this because we, we don't really have any money that we were spending on this. Um, because it's a little bit different. But so you've got to kind of break it down and look at the event you're holding, how long it is, and like kind of how the event plays out. So like realm events, so like when I run Thunder Guard's local event, we were very big. We maybe hit 30 people at our maximum um, with only like a handful of people coming from like Iowa and Minnesota. Um, so running that event was really different than running say Chaos Wars or Armageddon because there are less people. So I don't really need to have a head of troll because I can do that on my own. We didn't really need a head of feast because people would just help us cook feast. We didn't really need a head of field because someone would just, whoever wasn't fighting at that point would just step up and, and herald, right? Um, so the size of your event matters on to how you break down EC duties and generally, um, getting like where, when, where and when your event's happening also sort of matters in those. But yeah, generally it breaks down to budgeting, facilities, and organization and delegation of duties is kind of the main um, EC responsibilities. Our next question is how do you make an event budget? That's a really good question because it often matters where your money is coming from. So if you are a realm and you're running an event, the money's coming from your realm dues. So you wanna make sure you're not overspending that because those dues also cover whatever else you need to spend money on. If you're a big event like Bifter, I do believe the startup money for that came straight out of the event coordinator's pocket. Um, and so her budgeting of that money was very important to make sure she didn't go broke herself. Um, with Chaos Wars, the Highlands of Chaos has a budget. I don't know where the initial funds for that budget came from, but we're very conscious that we don't overspend our budget because that's all the money that we have. There's no money coming from anywhere else except the revenue from Chaos Wars, which is sort of why we are slowly moving towards like different things um, and why when we look for an event site, the cost of it has to stay in a certain range so like it depends on how much money you have to start with and then to be completely honest most of the budget for an event is going to go to your event site and insurance if your event site requires it and you should get it even if it doesn't um because that covers your butt um and then the next biggest thing the next biggest thing you're gonna have is feast um and like porta potty rental or like facility rental. So like porta potties or sinks or showers if you have to rent them, those are gonna be the next biggest cost. And then event tokens and paraphernalia. If you look in the how to run troll document, there's a huge list of all the things you need to run an event, why, and a general place to get them that's fairly affordable. So like it covers everything from like waivers to event tokens and like I did like a whole study not really an academic one but as close as I could get on like what event tokens people preferred and how much those cost um and with pictures of all of that so that's all in that troll document um and so it it all like your budget all depends on how much money you have to start with and what the event is. So the budget for a day event without a feast is gonna be really different than the budget for a day event with a feast. And the budget for a week long event is gonna look really different than the budget for a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday kind of thing. 
the size of your event also matters because the more people you have, the more facilities you need. So the larger your event, the more porta potties you have to have, especially because the health unit in your area is going to tell you how many you have to have per person. Um, the um, laws on like taxes in your area are going to tell you if you have to have your vendors fill out paperwork. Um, and there might be budgeting for having that paperwork that you have to fill out. Chaos Wars has to fill out paperwork for all of its vendors because the state of Idaho says so. Um, so that's a thing. Thankfully, the state of Idaho sends you those papers for free. Other states might not do that for free, so you might have to pay for those. So it all depends on where you are, how long your event is, and the amount of money you have to start with. Um, if you are looking to run an event and you don't know how you want to make that budget, reach out to someone who runs an event and they can probably help you. Uh, I said it in my last class and I'll say it again. You do not need to reinvent the wheel. Somebody probably has already figured it out and they are more than willing to tell you how to do it. Um, <laughs> um, all right. What are people looking for in an event is our next question. That is people dependent. A lot of people are looking at making sure they have enough time to fight and that's all they wanna do. They show up, they troll in, they put on garb, they fight, they eat, they go to bed. Um, there's a significant portion of our population who does that because that's all they wanna do. There's another portion of our population who wants to make sure there are classes to go to and other stuff for them to do um, and enjoy. And so they want to have classes, they want to have nightlife, they want to have different things going on so that they have stuff to do other than fighting. There's a portion of our population who wants kind of a balance of both, which can be kind of difficult. So like, ideally in an event, people are looking for a good place to camp that preferably, especially in the summer, has somewhere to go swimming um, and like, on an event logistics side, you're looking at a place that has access to running water and showers to prevent event plague and in now life to prevent actual plague. Um, and um, you're looking to make sure that like you have what like like the space for people. So like everyone kept saying, hey, Antoinette, Dop, let's go back to Silver Bell, let's go back to Silver Bell. That wouldn't function for us anymore. We grew out of that site we were too big. Um, our events may have gotten smaller in the last couple of years, but at the minute I say, hey, we're going to go back and have Chaos Wars at Silver Bell, we're going to have 500 people and we're not going to fit. Um, so like, those are things people are looking for in an event too. Like, it's kind of like a logistics thing, but it's also like, hey, we got to make sure we have space for everyone. We got to make sure we have enough facilities for everyone. And we got to make sure that we have um an area that people can cool off if it's especially hot um which for summer events depending on where you are it can be or i mean like any event in florida ever um so like what people are looking for an event kind of changes depending on who they are and what they're super into like what i look for an event is not what gaston is going to look for in an event because we have two very different like interests in things so like when I'm looking at an event that I'm going to to just enjoy, I'm looking for an event that I'm not running, that I don't necessarily have to volunteer to do anything for, and that has like classes and things for me to do other than sit and watch people hit people with sticks. I've been doing this for 12 years. I've watched enough people hit enough people with sticks. I don't need to do that anymore. Um, but Gaston is looking for a robust fighting field and a robust tournament um, scene and like, fighting night fighting so like he can fight till he wants to drop and go to bed like so that's like two different people can be looking for two very different things in an event um so you kind of have to try to balance both sides of that like the the growing non-combatant family side of our community um and the, the fighters and finding that balance can be kind of difficult i think we've sort of done it at chaos or at least we're getting there um so what people are looking for in an event differs depending on who they are really. Um, and you kind of do your best to make everyone as happy as possible knowing that you're never gonna make everyone perfectly happy. All right, uh, how would you adapt your planning for a non-combatant event? 
that's a really good question. I would definitely take a look at how the SCA runs their collegium events. We don't have, we've never had a collegium event. We have never had an event that is solely based on um, non-com classes, arts, and sciences. We've, we've never done that. We've never had a Bardic convention, but those things happen in the SCA. Um, so I would take a look at how they run their events. And then, especially right now, because I think, uh, Elena, you're looking at running an online, like sort of collegium, kind of like what we're doing. Uh, yes, I'm making plans to have it happen in November. Yeah, so I would take a look. I, I would talk with, with Leita and see how she set up schedule and classes and how she got people to do classes. And then I would just set up the schedule very similar to how we're doing right now um, and and go with that. But like if we were to have an in-person arts and sciences, that would be very, very different because we've never done that before. Um, so it would be a matter of like convincing people that this is something new and exciting and having it set up um, in a way that like allowed people to enjoy the classes, but it also still be kind of Bellegarth. So it would be really hard to like do the first time. The first time is probably not going to get attended very well once it's done in person. But the next time it might have more attendance and the next time that's sort of how you build events. So like Bifter was not 800 people the first time the event was run. It's 800 people now and Ockfest definitely wasn't a thousand people the first time they ran it. It's a thousand people now. So it's just a matter of building the event and like hyping it. So like Sin did a really good job about talking about this a lot. Maybe we could have talked about it more. Maybe we couldn't have talked about it more. But like, and I know last year people got annoyed with like how many things we posted about chaos, but it kept chaos relevant in people's heads, right? So like that thing, so like posting about it and be like, hey, I'm gonna do this in November, like starting now, like, hey, we're gonna have this thing in November. Do you wanna teach a class? Hey, we're gonna do this thing in November. These are the classes we have so far. Hey, we're doing this thing in November. Do you wanna teach a class? Like keeping it relevant, like posting on the Bellegarth events page, posting in the Bellegarth official discussion, like keeping it relevant to people, that helps people go, hey, I wanna do this thing. And especially now, because we have no real like um, um, thing, that is also a good point. AmpGuard is another good place to look at for non-com events. So AmpGuard and the SCA do non-com events. We do not because we weren't focused on non-com stuff for a very long time. We are focusing more on it now. Um, so looking at how the SCA and AmpGuard run those collegiums, run those like class only events um, would be a really good place to start figuring out how to run that like non-com event. I wouldn't label it a non-com event. I would label it a collegium or a class, like an arts and sciences um, conference sort of thing. Um, so it's not just like, this is only for non-fighters. It's for everyone who's into the arts and sciences. Yeah, I totally plan on um, calling it a collegium. And I have actually been discussing with Skull about having this be a, an annual event. And we actually have a location lined up in Twin Falls had there not been plague. <laughs> yeah. And the new, the new building that he bought? Yeah. 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 And so. Yeah, that makes sense. So I already have a location and everything. It's just, you know, all the planning of everything else. And I want this to be an annual thing and, you know, go forward and have. And I, I still want to, you know, like include, like, I don't want to alienate the fighters at all, but like, be like, kind of like, hey, this, this person's gonna talk about combat strategies or hey, this person's gonna discuss um, combat awareness or field awareness or whatever. And, you know, on top of, you know, all the arts and sciences and I want to include Seneschal classes as best I can and chroniclers as best I can so that you know I'm hitting all aspects of 
the spectrum. Yeah, so it's it's definitely, uh, it would be easier in person to access all of those spectrums and online, like those fighting classes are gonna be a little bit more difficult, but we can definitely still do them. Um, so like just figuring out your schedule and like keeping it relevant in people's minds is, um, and like Anna said, making sure people have a good time um, and avoiding large problems uh, is sort of the most important part you don't have to be perfect like she said but like try and make sure to avoid major things like if you see something's going to be a major issue maybe just don't do it and do something else um like sin and naga renamed um a staple of chaos wars culture into something completely different because a lot of people did not like what it was called um, and so now it has a new name and we're moving forward with that new name. So we've kept a thing, we've adapted it so it's less sort of awkward and icky and still fun and enjoyable for everyone and still fills the gap that the other thing used to fill, which was raising money for, for pub night. Um, so like, if you see something's gonna be a major issue, eh, do something else. Is, is probably a pretty good idea. Um, yeah, does anyone else have any event planning, running, questions, organization, confusion? Um, I don't really have any other questions really, but it just, it seems like there's a lot of delegation that does have to happen. Um, a lot of lists and definitely following up. I am, I am definitely interested in the Twin Falls thing that you're planning on doing. That's going to be happening. And if you need any help, I, I would definitely love to try to help in any way I can. Yeah. yeah, event planning is an awful lot of delegation and an awful lot of communication. Uh, things fall apart when there's not communication. Um, and that's the thing you you definitely don't want to have happen. Um, so yeah. yeah, I will wait a couple seconds to see if anyone else has any questions. Otherwise, I think we're probably done. Um, and we have another class starting in like 20 minutes, which I believe is latest class on something. <sighs> I don't actually know. Filling. Willing. Uh, and we also have DJ night tonight. It's 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 pub and dub tonight. What time does that start, Sin? Pub and dub starts at seven as well. Okay, so in about 20 minutes, uh, Leda has a class on quilling and, and pub and dub is starting. I think we're starting with DJ Demox. Um, and we that's are gonna be live on Twitch. Um, yes. And so as we finish up here, I would like to thank so Anastasia, for the use of her uh, Zoom, uh, Leda for her organization of classes, Len and Alex for their streaming of some classes to Twitch, uh, Sin for her organizational efforts, and everyone else for attending. Can I say another thing? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Uh, one thing that I really want to emphasize to everybody, if you can do it, is if you can try to keep your volunteers happy enough that you can um keep the event coordinators you have and keep like looking at volunteers who really stand out and then inviting them into that same circle so that that you're you know that you're basically trying to create a class of people who can run aspects of the event and have it be very robust um especially if somebody has to drop out suddenly you you have the ability to have someone step in and fill in a role because they filled in a role somewhere else before um, and I will say that having like, I don't think you can have too large of a, a staff volunteer pool, basically. Nope, I don't think that you can. So on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. Sounds good. Okay, recording is stopped. It'll be uploaded as soon as it's ready. Um, thank you, Antoinette, for teaching. You are most welcome. Thank you, all of you, for your questions about event coordinating and running and 
the like. If you have any other questions, feel free to hit me up. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.